Hi guys, we're back with another book today. And Helena is fully awake while we're reading it because the last time we recorded, what I happened? I was gonna pass. I was always gonna pass. No, you did pass out, I think. But this book is. My Little Golden Book about Betty White. Good reading. Look at her dogs. That looks like Jack as a puppy and a little miniature mix of, well, I'm sorry, a miniature Jack and then a mix of Chewy Angel and Chewy, Chewy, right? Yeah. Betty White. Everybody loves Betty White. If you're wondering what you said about those dogs, it's my dog. And, um, Uncle Jamie's dog is Jack and Chewy and Angel. You gotta talk a little bit louder. Yeah, this is Mayor of Hollywood. Okay, let's read. Betty White was born on January 17th, 1922. Oh my gosh, I did not realize that Betty White was a Capricorn like me. That's so cool. 1922 in Illinois and grew up in California. Betty and her parents enjoyed hiking, nature, and animals. She was an only child, but she got to be a sister to a lot of cats and dogs. Betty always felt surrounded by love, and she had spent her long and remarkable life giving that love back to family and friends, to audiences and animals and me. So this is that dog. When she was young, Betty wanted to be a forest ranger or a zookeeper. You told me you wanted to be a zookeeper. But those careers weren't open to girls at the time. Luckily, Betty had other passions. She loved to write, and sing, and perform in plays. Early on, she set her heart on being an actress. That's what I think you could be. Betty graduated from high school in 1939. Two years later, America entered World War II. Betty wanted to help in any way she could, so she volunteered to drive a truck carrying supplies to soldiers stationed in California. After the war, Betty set out to follow her dreams. She knew getting into show business wouldn't be easy, but she was ready for anything. Okay. Betty was bright, talented, beautiful, and funny, but she had to work hard to find jobs. She acted in local theaters and got small roles in radio commercials. Betty wanted to be on television. Back then, there were far fewer TV shows TV stations, and TV jobs than there are today. But Betty's hard work paid off. In 1949, she got her first full-time job as the host helper on a daytime show called Hollywood on Television. Later, she became the host herself. Today, most television actors memorize lines from a script someone else has written. Not Betty. She had to think on her feet or wing it in front of a live studio audience. And there were no breaks because Betty and the other actors performed in the commercials too. That meant Betty was in front of the camera five and a half hours a day, six days a week. Could she do it? You bet she could. Betty learned a lot and loved every minute. And viewers adored her from the start. Television grew and changed quickly, and so did Betty. She became one of the first female producers in Hollywood when she co-founded Bandy Productions, named after one of her dogs. On Betty's first show, she had interviewed movie stars. Now Betty and her business partners decided to make a situation comedy, or a sitcom, about made-up characters. It was called Life with Elizabeth. And this time, Betty was the star. Betty had always believed in being fair to all people. In 1954, when she hosted a variety show with skits and musical guests, TV stations in some parts of the country didn't want to air it. They didn't like that a black dancer, Arthur Duncan, was in the cast. They wanted Betty to fire him. That kind of prejudice made Betty mad. Arthur stayed on the show and had a long, successful career. 
and Betty and Arthur remained friends through the years. And I want to point out to you, Helena, that in 1954, that's Grandma Connie was only one years old. That was amazing that a white lady stuck up for a, a black man on television. She keeps yeah, she's an awesome, awesome human. As a girl, Betty had enjoyed playing games with her, enjoyed playing games with her mom and dad. And beginning in 1950, she became a popular guest on television game shows. Betty's quick wit charmed everyone, including one special man, Alan Ludden, the host of the show called Password. Alan and Betty fell in love. They married in 1963, and Betty became a stepmom to his three children. Betty and Alan lived happily together until Alan died in 1981. That's not true. Yes. Alan has always remained in Betty's heart. Life wasn't easy for her after his death, but staying busy helped her cope. Betty likes new challenges and taking on different roles. She studies, prepares, and works hard. That's one reason she's one of the most successful television stars in history. Betty is especially known for acting in two popular long-running shows, The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Golden Girls. She won Emmy Award for both shows. She is one of the Golden Girls. Betty has been honored many times. In 1995, she was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. Was Betty ready to stop working then? No way. She wrote books about her life and kept acting in movies and on television. At age 88, Betty became the oldest host of the comedy show Saturday Night Live. Betty received an Emmy for her performance, another honor in her long list of awards. She is so funny. Even with her busy acting career, Betty has always found time for animals. She has supported the Los Angeles Zoo for many years and has helped raise money to improve animal habitats and save endangered species like the California condor. Betty has also been lucky enough to meet some creatures that are just as famous as she is, including Coco the gorilla. Coco knew more than a thousand words in sign language. In fact, Coco gave Betty the name Lipstick. She made the sign for the word whenever Betty came to visit. Oh, that's so cute. Coco called Betty Lipstick. <laughs> that's what that ape named her. That's so cute. Along with helping wild animals, Betty supported groups that rescued pets, studied animal health, and trained guide dogs. Betty had loved cats and dogs since she was little. I grew up with pets in our house. They were more than pets. They were members of the family. When she was 89, Betty adopted Ponty, a golden retriever who hadn't been able to finish his guide dog training. Betty's talent and dazzling, dazzling smile have lit up world, the world and brought joy to millions. Her passion for helping animals has inspired others to do the same. Betty loves to make the world happy. No wonder people and animals everywhere have loved her right back. I think everybody needs a passion, whether it's one passion or a hundred. That's what keeps life interesting. The end. We hope you enjoyed this story. Yes, it's true about the wonderfully great Betty White. Have a great night, everybody. And happy Memorial Day weekend. And let's remember those that have fought and fallen for our country. Good night.